yourself, and uh, I hope you have a very uh, enjoyable travel. Uh, Kilo Charlie One Romeo Yankee Oscar. Uh, this is Oscar November Seven Oscar Fox Fox. God bless you, seventy three. All right, so there you go. It's a station from the Netherlands coming through on the new um, the new receiver that'll soon be the new transceiver. <coughs> this is going to be a uh, twenty meter um, rig. It's it's basically the MythBuster design. <coughs> I turned it off here <coughs> while I talk about it. It's basically the MythBuster design, but I'm I'm dispensing with the seventy five meter portion. This is going to be for the Dominican Republic for the Sutter Smoke Shack South because I found when I was down there um, this summer that I kind of missed having a 20-meter home brew rig. So I, when I came back here, I was looking for a project to work on, and I started throwing this together. I have a couple of pictures of it in its early stages, but uh, the receiver portion of it is done today, and I thought I'd give you guys a, a look at it and see which way we're going to go, show you what I've done so far. But um, here we go. Let, let's take a look. I'm going to go above here, and I'm going to pick out a, like a this thing here as a, as a pointer. So we started out with a uh, 5.2 megahertz crystal filter. I went with six crystals <laughs> because I only had about eight left, and I needed to try out a couple of them for the crystal oscillator section. So we ended up with a uh, six crystal uh, filter, and here it is. And you can see I've got the caps to ground. It's Cohen configuration, and it's got little L networks on the side. The, uh, the characteristic impedance of the filter was around 1K, and of course I needed 50 ohms. I needed it to look like 50 ohms on either side because the TIA amps, which you can see here in red, thank you, Todd K7TFC of mostly DIYRF, um, these TIA amps uh, take whatever you put in at this side, make it look like 50 ohms over here. Whatever you have on this side, make it look like 50 ohms over here, and vice versa. So um, I just made the crystal filter look like it would go into 50 ohms, and there we go, 50 ohms, 50 ohms all the way through. That's kind of kind of nice. I've got space here for one more TIA. The, the, the top TIAs are the received TIAs. The bottom TIAs are the transmit TIAs, termination and sensitive amplifiers. And I, I ran out of boards, but Todd kindly sent me a few additional boards, and I'll build that when I start working on the transmitter. So that's where I started. That's really basically the IF chain at 5.2 uh, megahertz. Then after that, I went over here, and I built up a, uh, a two-diode carrier um, a balance modulator and um, product detector so on on transmit it's a carrier it's it's a the, the carrier oscillator balance modulator this is the oscillator portion of it down here and on receive the same circuitry becomes the product detector and this is the uh, again the, the the carrier oscillator this is operated a little bit below the 5.2 megahertz so that when you mix them together here in the two diode mixer, you've got 5.2 coming in this way, you've got 5.2 something coming in this way, and you've got audio output. Audio comes over here. There's one little stage with a 2N3904 that is like the preamp. And then from there, I go to this little board. It's an LM386. It's uh, There's the LM386 service mount. You can get these things on uh, uh, Amazon or eBay. And they're about, oh, I don't know, about a buck a piece. And it's very convenient because you don't have to mess around with soldering the surface mount um, LM386 onto the board. Uh, it's got some exposed components on the bottom. So I take a little piece of foam board and I put it there just to insulate the board itself from the underlying PC board. I use a lot of meat pads in here. I had a, a bunch of meat pads that I picked up somewhere along the way. And it's kind of cool to include some of Rex Harper's products in the uh, in the in the project. The base of the project is, of course, a, a pine board, and I've covered it with copper tape that I got from uh, Home Depot, and this provides a good 
a good ground plane. So you can see most of the receiver project is done. I found a speaker today on uh, the, uh, the the Thomas Jefferson DC uh, direct conversion receiver project, and I'm going to use that in this rig. And I also found a little pot with a couple of uh, shielded cables. This pot will go in here roughly, and that'll give me some front panel audio volume control for the receiver. Right now, I you can see I, I have to reach up and, and move, change this thing here, which is a little pot on the LM386 board, and it's kind of unwieldy. I'm using a little speaker here. You can see the speaker line comes in, and it, it works out pretty well. Um, all right, so back over here, we're, we're, we're here, we're more on the, uh, the, uh, the transmit side over here. So again, we have the two Tias. Now, this is where I ran into a lot of trouble. Um, the, <clears throat> the VFO is out of a Yaesu FT-101. And this really didn't give me a lot of trouble. I knew I, knew I needed another little RF amplifier to boost the output of this up to the 7 dBm required by the diode ring mixers. So that's what that is. And I have a little um, kind of uh, this uh, a, a Zener diode here. This is a 5.1 volt Zener diode that drops the 12 volts down. So I have 12 volts coming in this way, goes through a 1K resistor down through the Zener diode, and we have 5.1 volts here, and that powers this thing up. They usually want they want six volts for this thing, but I only had a 5.1 volt Zener, so I went with that, and it, it seems to work work fine. Now. Here's where I violated some of my own rules. I, I always say that you should, you know, test each stage and only move on when that stage is, is fully tested. And I broke the rule this time and paid for it. So I got everything done here. All this was done. And I started to fire up the receiver. And I discovered that I was not able to hear the band noise on 20 meters. Now, this is unusual because I have another version of this rig, the Mythbuster rig, that's sitting right over there. There it is. And it hears the band noise just fine. So it has the same configuration. There is no RF amplifier ahead of the mixer. It just goes the antenna, bandpass filter, mixer, IF, audio, out. Okay. So something was wrong, and I assumed that the problem was in the bandpass filter, because bandpass filters are kind of finicky, and if you don't get them tuned right, if you don't get it right, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it going. And I, I was using a simple little ADE-1 mixer. I was using this thing here. You can see it here. I put a little ADE-1 mixer that I picked up at a garage sale, and I put it on one of these little meat pads. And I thought this was okay. And then I tried to replace it again. I, I had a whole bunch of ADE-6 mixers. And I put this on another, another pad, another me pad. And I thought it was okay. But no, both of them were bad. And I finally, in desperation, I decided, okay, look, I'm going to build another diode ring mixer, my own, using two of the trifiller toroid coils that Farhan left me years ago. Some diode, a diode ring, and boom. You put them, wire them together, and Bob's your uncle. I remembered that I had one of these <clears throat> from one of the Thomas Jefferson High School direct conversion receivers that we worked on. So I yanked it out of that, put it on the board here, hooked up the IF frequency here, the LO frequency here, and the RF signal here, and boom, Bob was my uncle. This is a a, a pretty stiff, pretty steep uh, bandpass filter that I had built. It's identical to the one that I used in the other RF, um, uh, the other uh, Mythbuster rig. These coils are all um, one microhenry, and there's the appropriate uh, capacitors to ground, and very small capacitors that link the LC elements. So these are um, these are there's four basically four parallel LC resonant circuits linked together by small, and I mean like four or two picofarads each. And so when the RF signal comes in, I, I'm able to look at this on the um, Antuino that I have. Here's my Antuino. And I'm also able to look at it on the Nano VNA. There's the Nano VNA. And it looks like it's a very, very steeply skirted 
narrow um, bandpass filter at around 14.2 megahertz. Goes to about 14 to about 14.5, where it's flat with only about one dB of insertion loss. And so it works, it works really well. But the lesson I had for this is <laughs> I should follow my own rules and test all the stages, including the stage with the mixer stage. I had so little trouble with the ADE1 mixer in the Mythbuster, in the original Mythbuster, I just assumed that it would work fine here. But I think what happens is those little cans, those little boxes, they actually have little diodes and tiny little coils in there. And I think that they're pretty easy to, uh, to destroy. So I think that's probably what happened. Whereas this thing, holy cow, man, you'd, you'd have to put some serious current through this thing to destroy those coils. And uh, it's a lot more robust. Anyway, you see I've got all this real estate left on the board here for uh, the RF amplifiers and for some TR relays that I'll put in. And so this will be the um, RF amplification stages in here. And uh, once I get that done and I get the other thing here, I'll probably have to build, a, I will, will definitely have to build a mic amp somewhere in this ter territory. Then um, Bob will be my uncle and um, we'll be ready to put this thing in a, in a box and uh, take it with me down to the Dominican Republic and I'll have a 20-meter uh, rig there also. You know, I could I could use the uh, just the, this, this, this readout from the ASU FT-101, but that's kind of crude. So I'll probably go, go get a, a Sanjian a counter and just run it with a, the IF of 5.2 megahertz and um, add with the output from the VFO to give me the operating frequency and that'll give me a nice a nice frequency readout you know, for this uh, for this rig. Uh, it's a bit smaller than the uh, the MythBuster, and I, which is good because uh, I really don't need big, big, huge rigs for uh, the smaller shack down in the Dominican Republic. But uh, anyway, it's coming together pretty well, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I am following Farhan's advice, and I'm pausing at this point just to listen to the uh, receiver that I've built, which is great fun. And uh, it sounds great, especially after the trials and tribulations of the bad <laughs> mixer board. And I, I've ended up with a, a pretty sharp bandpass filter, which is good because it'll prevent me from also transmitting the 5.2 megahertz signal that, that comes out of the mixer uh, on the transmit side. And um, anyway, it'll, it'll work out pretty well. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to finishing this thing off before we head back down to the Dominican Republic, probably uh, around Christmas time. Okay, 7-3 is from Northern Virginia.